These billionaires dared to disrespect Vladimir Putin, and they paid the price. Boris Nemtsov was a guy whose political career started out looking pretty bright. He was deputy prime minister to Boris Yeltsin in the 1990s, and as a charismatic young politician, it looked like he had a lot of potential. But then, Putin came to power, and everything changed. Nemtsov got pushed out of the center of Russian politics when his party was voted out of the Kremlin. And that's when he started going up against Putin. He started exposing government corruption. Putin did not like that one bit. But Nemtsov kept pushing his luck. During the Orange Revolution in 2004, when thousands of Ukrainians took to the street to protest a rigged election, Nemtsov took the side of the protesters against the Russian-backed candidate Viktor Yanukovych. Since Yanukovych was Putin's guy, he couldn't have been happy when Yanukovych lost that election to the pro-Western candidate. Needless to say, Nemtsov had been a thorn in Putin's side for some time, but that doesn't make what happened to him any less shocking. He's walking along this bridge when his killers struck. In 2014, Nemtsov was preparing a report on Russia's involvement in the conflicts in eastern Ukraine when he was shot just a few yards outside of the Kremlin. Surveillance footage shows him walking across a bridge with his Ukrainian girlfriend when a man suddenly shoots him four times and runs into a waiting car. For the longest time, no one knew who would order the assassination. But it turns out that Nemtsov had been tracked for weeks by the government's security agency. Now, I can't say Putin was behind the hit, but you've got to admit it's kind of suspicious. And if Putin could have had a guy killed right outside of the Kremlin, you know that's not a guy you want to piss off. But several billionaires have gotten on his wrong side over the years. First, there was this guy, Mikhail Khodorovsky. In the early 2000s, he was Russia's richest man. He was an oil tycoon who had done pretty well in the years after the fall of the Soviet Union, amassing a fortune of $15 billion. His friends described him as being fearless, a good trait to have when you're an entrepreneur trying to make it in post-Soviet Russia. But he probably should have been afraid of one guy, Putin. You see, as Khodorovsky got richer and richer, he couldn't keep out of politics. He started the Open Russia Foundation, which was all about making Russia more democratic and fair. He also funded the political campaigns of liberal candidates right under Putin's nose. But where he really went wrong was in 2003. That was when Putin gave this speech in front of Russia's most powerful men, basically telling them that they needed to stop mixing business with politics. Khodorovsky was there in the room, but he had no intention of listening to Putin. Putin couldn't stand having the richest man in Russia funding his opponents or blatantly disobeying him. So he did what Putin probably does best. He took action. He sent a bunch of federal agents to the airport where they arrested Khodorovsky at gunpoint for tax evasion and fraud. During the trial, Khodorovsky was put in a steel cage. Talk about humiliation. The trial itself was probably all for show. Khodorovsky had disrespected the wrong guy and it was clear that he was going to pay for it. He was sentenced to 14 years in prison in this place, a 250-year-old prison that makes some other prisons look like resorts. Surprisingly, Putin granted Khodorovsky a pardon just before the Sochi Olympics in 2014. But it's not like Putin had softened. He still had the same fragile ego and ruthless streak. He just wanted to look good for the media. Khodorovsky's now living in exile where he's still criticizing Putin, this time from a safe distance. But can someone really ever be safe, no matter how far away from Putin they are? This next billionaire certainly doesn't feel that way. Sergei Pugachev was once known as Putin's banker. That's him right there, shaking hands with Putin back in 2003. Like Khodorovsky, Pugachev did well during the 1990s. He gained control of two shipyards and a mine that, taken together, were worth over $7 billion. He had a lot of political power back then, too. He had helped Putin get picked to be Boris Yeltsin's successor as president, and he reaped the benefits once Putin came to power. At least, until he started stepping out of line. You see, sometime in the early 2000s, Pugachev fell in love with this English woman, Alexandra Tolstoy. If you know anything about Putin, you know he's not a fan of the West. So that relationship really got under his skin. Having never spent much time outside of Russia, Putin just couldn't understand why Pugachev would want to marry a Westerner. Then Pugachev apparently started making moves to leave Russia. He bought houses in London and applied for a French passport. That was the final straw. Like the Mafia, when you're in Putin's inner circle, you can't just leave. There are going to be consequences. 
Putin accused Pugachev of siphoning hundreds of millions of dollars from a billion dollar loan that the Russian government had given him for his companies. They froze his assets and hounded him in the courts, accusing him of having embezzled money. Then things got dangerous. One day in 2015, some men took Pugachev onto a yacht off the coast of France, where they gave him an ultimatum. Either he could hand over $350 million, or they would kill his family. Soon after, Pugachev found a mysterious brown package taped to the underside of his car. That turned out not to be a bomb, but Pugachev still got the message. He was being tracked and threatened, and it wasn't going to end well. So he packed up and left, and has been lying low ever since. The examples of Khodorovsky and Pugachev would make anyone stop and think before they crossed Putin, but since the outbreak of the war in Ukraine, a handful of other billionaires have been quick to criticize the invasion. Now, some of those billionaires are careful not to mention Putin personally. I guess they have learned something from the past. But there are a couple who are not mincing their words. Take Oleg Tinkov, for example. Tinkoff has been coming right out and calling the war insane while placing the blame squarely on Putin. He said the army was basically hung over from years of corruption and nepotism, which could only be blamed on the man in charge. He even went as far as to renounce his citizenship, writing that he can't and won't be associated with a fascist country, and that he would love nothing more than to see Putin's regime fail. I wonder what Putin thinks of those strong words. And Oleg Tinkoff isn't alone in his attacks. Boris Mintz is another billionaire who hasn't been shying away from the microphone. He left Russia in 2015, the same year that Boris Nemtsov was assassinated. From exile, he's called Putin's actions vile, and even compared Putin to Hitler, calling the invasion the most tragic event in recent history. But even Boris knows the consequences of disrespecting Putin. Since leaving, the central Russian bank has gone after his investment company with legal proceedings that he says are just being used to punish him. If he loses that case, he could owe as much as $850 million. But this is just another Putin tactic, and Boris has seen it before. First it was Khodorovsky being charged for fraud tax evasion. Now he's accepted that it's his turn. That's just the price you pay for disrespecting Vladimir Putin. To Putin, billionaires are a threat. They have lots of money and resources and can support his enemies, like the protesters who he's been trying to crack down on. If you're a billionaire and you're not with Putin, then you're against him. In fact, you're an enemy of the state. And we all know what can happen to Putin's enemies.